So here we are at chapter 5, section 6. Um, so far, we've done a lot of stuff with polynomials and polynomial functions and solving them, finding zeros. We're going to kind of clump a lot of um, things together that we've already learned, especially about the um, how many solutions. Um, we learned like way back in like section 1 or 2 that whatever the power is, that's how many solutions you should have. That's basically based on the fundamental theorem of algebra. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to use some synthetic division to find other solutions and stuff like that. So our objectives, we're going to answer the question, how can we use theorems to find possible solutions in more difficult polynomial equations? So we're going to look at what we did um, last time and find what our possible uh, roots are. And then we're going to use the fundamental theorem of algebra to solve polynomial equations with complex solutions. So we only have one vocabulary word, and it's the fundamental theorem of algebra that says if p of x is a polynomial of degree where the power is greater than 1, then p of x equals 0 has exactly n roots, including multiple and complex roots. So between real roots and between imaginary roots, you will have a total of whatever the greatest power is. So for this one, what are the roots of x to the fifth minus x to the fourth minus 3x cubed plus 3x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals 0? Well, based on the fundamental theorem of algebra, our largest power is the fifth power. That means we have five roots, so five solutions. So what we're going to do um, is we're going to look at the possible solutions. So from standard form, we take our factors of four. Come on, work with me. So our factors of four are one, two, and four. And our factors of one, which are one, and then we find positive and negative both. 1 over 1 is positive negative 1, positive negative 2, positive negative 4. So that's where we get our possible rational roots. You should have learned that in our last lesson. And then we're going to evaluate each one and see what our solution is. Um, so I went ahead and did the first one for you. P of 1 equals 0. That means x minus 1 is our factor. So if we know um, P of 1 is a solution, we can use synthetic division in order to uh, make this into a smaller polynomial. So I'm going to go ahead and write 1 here. Then I have 1, negative 1, negative 3, 3, negative 4, and 4. Bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. That's 0, 0, negative 3. That's negative 3. That's 0. Uh, 0, negative 4, negative 4, 0. So this becomes x to the 4th minus 3x squared minus 4 equals 0. Now I'm pretty sure that this is factorable. Um, we can write x squared minus 4 times x squared plus 1. That makes negative 3, yes, equals 0. So x minus 1 is one of our factors. Then we can set each one of these equal to 0. So x squared minus 4 equals 0. Add 4 to both sides. x squared is 4. Square root. x is 2 and negative 2. And then x squared equals negative 1. Square root. x is i and negative i. So my solutions are negative 1, or positive 1 solution. Did it ask for solutions or factors? What are the roots? So my factors are x minus 1, x minus 2, x plus 2, x minus i, and x plus i. So my solutions are 1, 2, negative 2, i, and negative i. And that's all five of them. So we have our roots, our factors, our zeros, however you want to call them. And you can find that by um, finding what your real ones are and going ahead and dividing them and then seeing if you can factor from there. It cuts down on a lot of 
guessing and checking time. All right, why don't you go ahead and try this one, and this is going to be your lesson check, so make sure you do it and you write it down. Um, so before you want to do this, what do you want to put it in? Standard form, and then you're going to find possible roots and start checking them out. So let's find all the zeros of f of x equals x to the fourth, fourth plus x cubed minus 7x squared minus 9x minus 18. This time we're going to use our graphing calculator to find any real roots. So go ahead and put this into your um, y1 function. So do y1 equals, and then you're going to have to do x caret 4 plus x caret 3 minus 7x squared minus 9x minus 18. And then go ahead and hit graph. And then you're going to look for where it crosses your x-axis. Oops. Um, I went ahead and graphed it. And it makes a shape that kind of does this thing. So what we're looking for, except this one goes down further. So what we're looking for is um, our zeros, where it crosses the x-axis. So in order to find those, you're going to have to go to second calc, and then it's number two is your zero, and then it's going to ask for a left bound, and then for a right bound. So from this point, which way is going left? Is up going left or is down going left? Up is going left, so get your blinky box up here, hit enter, and then when you go for your right bound, get your blinky box down here, hit enter, and then it says yes, hit enter one more time, and it gives you a solution. Now, for your two solutions, you should get, go ahead and find them. No, really, pause it and go ahead and find them. Okay, for your two solutions, you should get 3 and negative 3. Well, since we know 3 and negative 3 are solutions, we can go ahead and use synthetic division to divide and see um, if we have something that's factorable left. So I'm going to do a negative 3 over here. Um, 1, 1, negative 7, negative 9, negative 18, 1, negative 3, negative 2, positive 6, negative 1, positive 3, negative 6, positive 18, 0. Okay, so I'm gonna just going to go ahead and do it again with positive 3. So I get 1, that's 3, 1, that's 3, that's 2, that's 6, and 0. So I'm left with x, let's see, this is to the 4th, this is cubed, so this is x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. That is not factorable, so what are we going to have to do in order to solve this to find our other two solutions? You guessed it, we use our quadratic formula. So x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 all over 2 times 1. Now we're going to go ahead and simplify as much as possible. So negative 1 plus or minus 1 minus 8 over 2 negative 1 plus or minus negative 7 over 2 so it's 1 plus or minus i squared to 7 over 2 so here are two of my solutions and I also have 3 and negative 3 as my other two solutions and it was an x to the fourth power so we should have four solutions got it all right so oh there it is complicated mess hey look we got the same answer we must be smart all right so let's go ahead and do this one 2x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus x minus 6 go ahead and graph it and find your zeros I'm gonna do the same 
All right, I found solutions at x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. So I'm going to go ahead and use synthetic division. Um, let's see, negative 1, 2, negative 3. I don't have an x squared, so I need to leave a space. 0, negative 6. So that's 2, and that's negative 2. Makes negative 5, makes 5 and 5 and negative 5 and negative 6 positive 6 0 it's always nice when you know you did it right okay we know 2 is also one of our zeros so I'll bring down the 2 that's 4 negative 1 negative 2 3 6 0 okay so that's our two solutions this leaves us with x squared minus x plus 3. Now, is this factorable? Well, I don't have any factors of 3 that add up to negative 1. So I'm going to go with no. So I'm going to put this into the quadratic formula. Um, so 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 3 all over 2 times 1. one minus twelve over two that's negative eleven so I'm going to change that to one plus or minus i square root of eleven over two so those two of my solutions my other ones are negative one and two and it's to the fourth power so I should have four they are all accounted for alright and we're done that was pretty mostly painless. Um, so make sure you're reviewing skills that we're learning because especially this year, everything builds. So if you miss something, make sure you ask questions and you go back and you learn things. All right, have a good night.